We live in a different day and age than our parents, than our grandparents. Everything has changed. Televisions, microwaves, the advancement of automobiles, education, cell phones, computers, everything is different. Technology is moving at a rate faster than we can adapt to, faster than we can even understand. This video's goal is aimed at helping you and your metamorphosis to adapt to what's going on. Dating is not easy. If you don't know tactics, maneuvers, strategies, you will be lost in dating forever. A lot of people will say, I don't have time to play games. It's not about games, it's about information. Here are five ways you can get a guy to go from texting you to calling you consistently. Now these are not in order of importance, they all have value, but I want this one to come first. Call him. A lot of women have outdated mindsets. A lot of women live by a guy is gonna always come after them. I'm here to break it to you. Men are not out here looking for wives. When we find a wife, it is because our natural life course has led us to that. There's not a single man that I've ever met that said, hey, I'm looking for my wife. If you are a relationship-based woman, if you want the attention of a man, it is important that you call this man, especially if you want him to call you. Calling him is important because you're showing him that it's okay to call and to be called. To you, you only operate with your narrow-mindedness of your experience. As a guy who has dated in this generation, most women don't pick up the phone. Most women don't call. If you do that, it gives you an advantage over all those other women. As well as most women allow themselves to be just text. You take control and you take power when you call a guy first. And it doesn't necessarily have to be when you guys first meet. It could be at any time throughout the interaction. Call him first, don't be afraid to call. There are a lot of women who say things like, it's the man's job to call me. That's nonsense. Don't be one of those women. Number two, I have an Apple iPhone. I believe that FaceTiming is one of the greatest things we've ever come up with from a technology standpoint. If you don't have an Apple iPhone, you can use Skype. There are other video call options. I believe the video call option is the most important option that we have available for us. Obviously, we all want face-to-face, in-person interactions. But if we can't get that, the next closest thing is to FaceTime or Skype. If you have the option, use it. Don't worry if your hair is not done, if your makeup's not done. A real man who you're going to hang around is not going to always see you done with your makeup and your hair. So don't worry about trying to impress him. Worry about the connection. And the connection gets thicker and stronger through FaceTime. Number three is about psychology and it really depends on a couple of factors. It depends on how much time you have throughout the day and it depends on your personality. Number three, text him the introduction to a story. So what I mean by this is maybe you're at lunch break on, at work, which is say one o'clock, two o'clock, and you don't really have time to sit down and engage and have a full conversation. Or maybe you have to run errands, so you think of something quick. So what I want you to do is text him the introduction to a story. Stories are better if they're told in person or over the phone. If I ask you, how are you doing? How's your day? That's small talk, that's simple. But if I tell you, hey, I have something crazy to tell you, you won't believe what happened or hey, you won't believe what I just got in the mail. That creates excitement, that creates a buzz, that sets up a story, a narrative. You can take the simplest thing and turn it into a story. It does not have to be something dramatic. It does not have to be you won the lottery. It can be something so simple as an angry customer you dealt with at work and how you dealt with it. It's all about the presentation. So the way I will use this to my advantage is I am naturally a storyteller. I like to talk. I like to tell stories. I like for people to know what I did and what I went through. So I would text her and say, when we talk later, right? Leading them to know that we're gonna talk later. And I would say, when we talk later, I have a crazy story for you. They're going to respond by saying, hey, tell me now, or I can't wait to talk. That way you're creating that buzz and that excitement for that phone call that can take place later, and it's not something awkward like, you need to call me, or you need to talk to me. Number four, this is about psychology. Reward him for talking on the phone. Now, everybody's situation is different. But remember, this video is aimed at a woman who wants to get the guy to call her, who wants to know how to do it. In any level of 
psychology, if you give positive reinforcements for positive behaviors, it is known to improve, to increase, and in that the subject will repeat the behaviors. That's why you give a dog treats. That's why you reward students for getting straight A's. So if a man calls you and that is a behavior that you are trying to get, to implement, to repeat, reward him. Now, obviously, it's up to your situation and your guys' interaction with each other to determine what that reward may be. It may be something as simple as when the conversation is over, simply saying, hey, I appreciate you sharing your time with me today. I appreciate you getting on the phone with me today. I appreciate you talking to me today. That's a simple thank you. That's showing gratitude. That's showing appreciation. Simply doing that right there is going to sway the behavior of not calling, you know? Consider doing something reward-based when you get what you want because that's what this is about. This is about you getting what you want. So you, when you get what you want, you give back reward. You give back positive feedback. You give back positive encouragement, positive reinforcement. And this is going to guarantee that it continues. Number five, don't be a woman who has the victim-based mindset, who has a self-defeating mindset, who says things like there are no real men, guys don't want to talk anymore. It's up to you as a woman to create the standard of living that you want to have for yourself. If you are currently out dating, it's up to you, not the guys. It's up to you to determine how your dating experience will go. You can sit back and accept what's given to you, or you can create a standard for how people are going to interact with you. Personally, if I want to talk to someone, I'm going to call them. If I want them to talk to me, I'm going to suggest that they call me. Texting is fine. Texting is all about relaying information, maybe a little bit of cute flirting. But at the end of the day, if you cannot get the in face person to person interaction, the next best thing is to get on the phone, FaceTime or call. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really want to know what you think about these tips. Comment below. Let me know if you'll use them. If you have used them, have you had any success? If you watch this video, then go back out in the dating world and you try these tips, comment below and let me know if it worked. Because if it didn't work, I can give you another strategy. Just let me know. My book on dating, Dear Love Life, is going to be in the description below. It's a 400 page book that gives a lot of value. It gives a lot of substance on how to date successfully in this generation. Peace and love to you.